I wanted to start with my example of the extrusion that I had on hand, which is easy to source in the US. And this is one inch by one inch Faztec. Now this is aluminum extrusion. You can cut it with a chop saw uh, that is intended for wood. So you can see here that it's straight cuts, 90 degree cuts you can do on a saw. The main thing here is that you need to square up the frame. Um, you'll notice that in, in here there's two diameters. Now you may want to play with this diameter a little bit, whether it's through the process of printing this part or uh, actually modify the drawing. One thing about these roller bearings is this inside race. There's a little part on the inside. The race on top here would actually extend beyond the face of this. Now that's important. That's why I have this lip. This lip rests on the outside of the bearing so that it clamps the outside of the bearing and rests against that. But then we have uh, this part so that the race and the bar that's riding inside it can actually turn. Okay, so here's the whole assembly um, for the tensioner. Um, it's similar to the back instead of a bearing, uh, the part that I just went over. This is extremely similar. It started as that exact part. And then I removed the roller bearing hole and I, uh, let me just isolate this and show you. And I made that go almost all the way through that hole so that my tensioning device in there can uh, be pulled forward and back backwards through this. And that's the tensioner. The bar goes all the way through to the side, flush with the side. Okay, so now you can see how the tensioner works. Originally I had it like that, so it was one operation part uh, that would work, but not in, if you're gonna print this, um, you know, you'd want this to bridge across there. So you'd want to print this part 100% uh, infill or, you know, at least 75 so that that's really nice and strong. Now let's look at the, the actual uh, belt assembly. And I'm actually going to turn off this. Now that it's a whole nother topic on how you join this belt together um, to tape the inside. You got to lay it on the table, do your butt joint, tape it, put it on the printer, and then tape the top. Or you can do that on the table as well, I guess. Um, so um, now you've got some printed parts and some rollers. These, these are um, English as well, sourced off McMaster Carr. They're, it's kind of arbitrary what size uh, aluminum you use. I just happen to pick... Um, one and three quarter that there. Um, this was intended to fit very tightly inside this printed part and give access to the, the set screws with an Allen wrench. Now that will require, uh, but let me tell you the bad news, in this uh, particular print, this design, two of the holes didn't align. Uh, so I ended up drilling uh, a hole into this part to access the other set screw. I recommend flatting the eight millimeter bar so you get nice good grip uh, from your set screws on the inside. Um, so you, it's really key that, that set screw, those set screws, this is where all the power transfers to the bar. So how does the power from the bar transfer to this? Well, this is a press fit. I'm probably gonna glue it as well, which means that if I ever have to reassemble it, it's gonna be a nightmare. Uh, because that's how it transfers to the aluminum rail. Now on this side, this is just a simple um, press fit on this part. Uh, all I did was make that slightly too small so that you kind of got to use a hammer <laughs> to get that in. You may want to adjust that, but you want this tight. You want it gripping against that. Uh, one other idea is, oh, and by the way, um, I did in this part, I drew kind of a homemade set screw um, I left room for just a typical M3 screw to, to be threaded through there. Press against, again, a flat in the bar in this area would be helpful. So I've got uh, that going all the way through. I'll put a set screw on each side. I'll probably put a dab of Loctite. I will put some glue or Loctite on this to try to get it to bond to the aluminum. I mean, it's absolutely key that the the power from the um, the drive via the belt 
uh, transferred, I better move that back, transferred to this, um, it needs to translate all the way to the aluminum and therefore uh, get to the belt itself. If you fail on that, this thing will just spin. Okay, so having covered that, again, uh, we're doing what is easily doable with a 3D printer. You can see the set screws over here. By the way, um, when you cut your aluminum, these are just you know hollow aluminum tubes. Uh, I have machined one that's solid and incorporates all of these interfaces with the bar and all that. Uh, it's really, really nice. It's just super expensive. So a print apart may work. The, the length of this isn't that critical. I happen to have in the drawing, it's very exact so that the washers and the frame, so the frame rails that, that go across to, to set the width, um, you do want everything to lock together. You don't want any slop. You don't want there to be a gap between this and the frame. And so I even measured my washers, 1.65 millimeters on my washers. Uh, I, I really want this to be tight so that it doesn't want to wander back and forth. If this, if one of these rollers goes back and forth, your belt's going to go back and forth, at least on one end, and then it'll start to wander back and forth. You don't want that. So it is pretty critical that you nail the overall uh, width from here to here. Uh, it needs to be identical uh, between here and here. And really the critical area is uh, the outside of the washers need to be exact on this frame so that when you have your perfectly squared, perfectly parallel rails, that it has no slop. You can suck those frame rails in so that it runs true. So that's enough about, I mean, on this side, it's not as interesting as uh, of that side. This side is, is a little easier. Um, now, since this is a drive mechanism down here on this end, you'll see I put uh, this whole thing turns, even the bar itself turns. Everything is rigidly coupled together and the whole thing rotates and it's the roller bearing sitting inside those corner blocks that uh, is gonna allow that to rotate and it's driven by um, this motor. Now, um, since I'm talking about the drive, I better finish up. So this is a geared stepper. Uh, you can try it without it, but you're probably gonna need it. Uh, a lot of force on this. <laughs> It is tensioned independently, and it's not very elegant, really. Um, you know, the, the geared stepper just bolts to this plastic piece. And uh, there's just a couple of, you know, so you might do well to, <laughs> we'll see how well this holds up over time, but um, metal parts here would be better, so I can really reach in there tighten those screws, make sure this is really rigidly mounted to the frame so it doesn't slip, and so your belt doesn't tension. I thought about putting a uh, sprung roller bearing on here to keep that belt tight. I didn't do it. Uh, may be a call for that later, but I'm gonna, hope. and by the way, you could actually, um, you know, bolt right into the frame, or, you know, you just, you just need it tight. You need this belt tight. Um, I guess there's enough said about that. By the way, this is a 20 tooth, uh, 20 tooth pulley, um, off of Amazon with an eight millimeter, um, you know, down the center, not your typical five millimeter because these geared steppers are eight millimeter. Feel free to swap that up as you want. Uh, it just has to turn and there's a lot of tension on this. So you're going to need a lot of uh, torque there. Uh, printed part, pretty self-explanatory. But down here on the idler end, uh, let me just isolate this. This is, it just goes into that aluminum tube and a, you see that little uh, ledge there that holds the outside of the bearing? Because on this particular piece, the bar itself, and these are identical Actually, um, this and this are identical. And I did make, I'll look down the, the uh, I can tell my wife and kid are about to be home. Um, this belt needed to sneak in before the outside rail. So this distance across here is what made me uh, do a printed part that was 
taking up that space um, as needed. So the, the belt is going to be, you know, over here, and you'll see this printed part. So I just made it symmetrical. Uh, I could have made it smaller on this side. I just like the symmetry of it all. So when you have the, the belt revealed on this, um, uh, where is the stainless steel belt? Boom. It just, it's symmetrical in the frame. Uh, so that was just a kind of a form over function design. It's going to take a little longer to print those parts. I know it's unnecessary, but I like symmetry, so that's what I did. But on this side, uh, this will be stationary because it's going to be actually pressed into and locked into that printed part um, from the... Come on in. It'll be locked into the uh, tensioner when we have all of this. Let me just reveal all of it. The frame... There's the whole kit and caboodle. Uh, it's actually pressed into this, this part here, and it will not rotate. So this bar does not rotate. It's the roller bearings that are tucked into here. The roller bearings rotate around the, the stationary bar, and these roller, the idler is what I call it on this side, will spin. So that's a pretty, th oh, there's a couple of parts I didn't mention. Um, I integrated into these four corners a little spacer uh, to raise this bed to get the tension. And so I just added here in the middle, there's just a round printed spacer that holds the bed up off the top. Um, you know, since this is open on the bottom, it's not really for air or anything. It's just, you know, you may want to put more spacers or this this bed could be mounted completely flat to this extrusion, but if you choose to use a heated bed on your belt printer, um, you're going to want to isolate the heat, you know, because this, if this is aluminum, it's going to be quite hot. So I wanted to eliminate or um, insulate the aluminum here from touching the aluminum here. Oddly, you get a little heat through the screws themselves. If you, uh, you'll notice that if you heat this bed. So that's the uh, one by one uh, inch extrusion from Faztech used to design a uh, belt printer. All of the design choices I made, uh, explanation of a lot of that. Um, you'll put this together, you'll tension these two screws, make sure it runs true. And it only goes one direction, so if there's a little slop in that stepped uh, geared stepper, it's okay. Um, so that's the design, the first design I wanted to show you, and I'll cut the video here and do a separate video for the 20 by 20 uh, frame with a wider belt here in a second, but uh, thanks for watching.